Hi there, welcome to the Upcycled Design Lab. If you're new here, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. If you've seen some of my recent videos, you might know that I've added this texture to a couple of plastic planters that I have outside. So I'm curious to see how well it will hold up. But I was also curious to see if adding an adhesive would help the texture to stay on a little bit better. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'm starting with my two ingredient texture paint and I just like to use this base primer coat paint mixed with coffee grounds because I always have plenty of coffee grounds. I think it makes a really nice texture and I generally have some primer paint around from a house project as well. So I like to use what I have. And on that note, I'm gonna be adding a couple of glues that I just have on hand. I have this cheap clear glue and also my go-to sealer and glue, which is the Mod Podge Gloss. I am trying to be a little scientific here, so I did measure out equal parts of paint into three tin cans, and then I added equal parts of coffee grounds and two tablespoons of each of the glues for my test paints. And I think I had about a half a cup of paint in each can. I decided to test all my paints on several surfaces, so I'm using some glass bottles, some tin cans, and also a plastic jug just to test out how it adheres to all three of these surfaces. One of the reasons that I like to use the primer paint as my base for my texture paint is because it is very good at ad adhering to many different surfaces. And I expect that it will adhere to all three of my surfaces, but I'm curious as to how to get the texture to hold a little bit better with the paint. I use kind of a dabbing motion rather than a brushing motion to apply my texture paint and as expected it did adhere pretty well to all of the surfaces. I suppose not surprisingly that uh, in hindsight the two samples that had the glue were a little bit thinner and so you can see particularly on the plastic bottle where there's quite a bit more texture on my control paint the clear glue for some reason has a fair amount of texture and then the Mod Podge does not have much texture at all. On the cans and the bottles, I feel like I got a little bit more even coverage as far as the texture goes, but I wasn't really happy with the amount of texture that I got on any of my pieces. So I decided to add quite a bit more coffee to all of my paint samples and then I put a second coat on the bottles because those were the pieces that I decided to go ahead and finish. So the second coat of primer and texture are dry on all my bottles and it's time to find out if the glue has made any difference in the way that the texture adheres to the bottle. So for this test, I'm really just trying to knock off any of the loose particles that would fall off if the piece was bumped. I'm not scrubbing super hard, but I am trying to rub off as much of the loose texture to see if there's any difference among all three samples. So this first one is my control sample and it just has the texture and the primer paint. And you can see that quite a bit of the texture is coming off. So my next sample is the version with the clear glue and you can see that quite a bit of the finish is coming off of this as well. I was a little surprised that this glue did not seem to make much difference in the amount of finish that was lost when you were trying to brush off the loose particles. I will mention that on both of these samples there's plenty of texture left on the piece so it doesn't really affect the final look of your piece as much as it just is sort of a mess that you have to deal with before you put the finishing coat on your project. If you're enjoying today's content, please be sure to like this video. Also consider subscribing if you haven't already and check the bell icon so that you're notified when I upload new videos. The last sample here is my Mod Podge mixture and you can see that there are still some pieces of the finish coming off. They do seem to be a little bit bigger pieces and not quite as dusty. 
And if you compare the amounts that came off the other two samples, you can see that there is quite a bit less of the finish coming off. So I would say that the Mod Podge does help the coffee or whatever texture you're putting in your paint to stay fixed on your project a little better than the other two. Now that may not be an important aspect for you. It is an additional cost to add the Mod Podge to the mixture. And like I said, the other two certainly still have plenty of texture on them. So depending on where you're gonna use these items, you might not need to add this additional fixative because while the Mod Podge did make a difference in how much finish was lost, it didn't hold all the finish on completely. I am planning to do a little more testing on these finishes and I want to test them outside. So I'm adding some paint colors that I've used in previous yard projects. And I should be able to keep track of the finishes because I'm color coding them here. The gold is the test paint which just has the coffee grounds and the primer paint. The green color has the clear glue and the blue color has the Mod Podge. And then because they are going to be outdoors and these acrylic paints are not made to hold up outside, I am putting a Deco Art Clear Coat Varnish Gloss Finish on them as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found this information a little bit helpful and insightful for your next textured paint project. Have a lovely day and I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.